dressed as Wonder Woman. She shows that girls can be daring and brave. She's a superhero. She, she saves a lot of lives. As a little girl, Wonder Woman was the only female superhero, so she was irresistible. In the 70s, with the second wave feminism, it was like the perfect time for Wonder Woman to come back. And of course, she came back in the new media, which was TV. I thought it was my job to show women that this guy's knocking you around well. You know, I'm knocking back. Because she was successful, other shows came along to sort of capitalize on her popularity, like The Bionic Woman with Lindsay Wagner as Jamie Summers. This whole cultural revolution was going on. So it was not surprising in retrospect that the show was an absolute hit. Starting with the Riot Girl movement, girls who grew up with Wonder Woman and Charlie's Angels through punk rock music and handmade zines are taking the images that we grew up with and dissecting how they've influenced us as women. There's not very many images of powerful women in the media that we could find at all. That was really a wonderful thing about the 90s was we felt like we could take an image of Wonder Woman and claim it as our own and turn it into something else. We felt that power. It's about making your own media. 3% of the decision-making positions in media are held by women. How women are going to be portrayed, 97% of those decisions are being made by men. To be able to become president, to be able to become the big scientists, the engineers, you need to be able to imagine it. Girls need imaginary superheroes because they need to know that they can go out and tackle villains and take on the world and that their gender is not an obstacle. Reading about heroes or watching heroes, they teach us how to be better people. They teach us that we can aspire to do great things.